The month of May is truly one of the best bass fishing months that you will experience all year long. But in May, depending on where you live in the country, you're going to be either hit with the pre-spawn, fish that are spawning, or the post-spawn. And today, I wanna to give you five lures that I wouldn't leave home without during May. Five lures that are gonna work in each one of those phases. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Sportsman's Outfitters is the place that I like to shop. And I like to shop there because they typically have some of the best deals and some of the best prices on your favorite lures and I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description for all the lures that I'm going to talk about today if you guys want to pick some up hit those links down below in the description and you're greatly going to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel these lures that I have set aside over here are lures that will work in the pre-spawn during the spawn and in the post spawn I really picked out these lures specifically for that reason because I don't know where you live you may live in California you may live in New York you may live in Florida but regardless, these lures should be able to help you out. You should be able to catch bass in the month of May on these five. So let's dive right into it. The first lure, the first technique that you should absolutely never leave home without during the month of May is a floating worm. For a long time, I really didn't even want to talk about the floating worm on this channel because I just believe that a lot of the new age anglers don't fish this technique a whole lot. This is really an old school technique. A lot of guys that fish this, that have been fishing for a number of years, have heard about a floating worm. But it just seems like a lot of guys, like I said, new age anglers, anglers who haven't fished a lot, don't pick up the floating worm a lot. Now, because it's called a floating worm, you may think that this worm floats and it doesn't. I actually want this worm to sink extremely slow. I usually use just a zoom trick worm and I like it in either bubble gum or methylate color. And one of the best things that I absolutely love about this technique is it is a visual technique. The way that you work this bait, you're gonna cast it out next to cover that you can see and you're going to work it just below the surface. Usually I'm going to twitch it a couple of times and let it sink. Now you can rig it wacky style like I have here. You can also rig it Texas style. And like I said, I'm going to cast this out by cover. I'm going to twitch it a couple of times. I'm going to let it sink very, very slowly. And you will see fish come from two foot, three foot, five foot, 10 feet away to come up there and get this bait. And it's it's absolutely one of my favorite bites because it's so visual. You get to see that fish come up, eat that bait, and it is it is so much fun. Like I absolutely love this. And the thing about it is like I said, with all of these lures, it will work in that pre-spawn time frame when that water is kind of in the 50 degree range. It will also work when those fish are actually spawning and on beds. And then during the post spawn, when you have bass that are actually guarding fry, this is one of the best techniques to go out there and catch them. So do not forget about a floating worm. I've done a full video on the floating worm before, and I'm gonna leave that down below as well. Now the next lure, the next technique is another one that is just extremely fun to go out there and fish and that is fishing a weightless fluke. During the month of May, depending on where you live in the country, you're gonna see a lot of bigger shad up shallow. And a lot of times these shad, threadfin shad, gizzard shad, you're, sometimes you have a die off kind of in that March, April time frame, and those fish feed heavily on shad. But a lot of times in May, you will also have a shad spawn of some sort. The shad spawn will typically occur after the bass spawn, but it is a great time of the year to go out and fish a fluke. Now, a few favorite places that shad absolutely love to spawn are on riprap type banks or rock banks. They love to spawn on docks, especially docks that float. And they will also spawn on kind of your crispier, harder grass like hydrilla or milfoil. Now, sometimes when I fish around a shad spawn, I'd like to show the bass just something that's a little bit different. As you can see here, I have a chartreuse fluke style bait. This is actually a Strike King caffeine shad. And I love to show the bass just something a little bit different because they see a ton of shad up there. So showing them a color that is a little bit different sometimes just helps that bait to stand out when they're feeding so heavily on shad. Now, regardless if you're fishing around that shad spawn or not, a fluke can still be a great 
great bait to catch fish. You can actually just cast it out and actually work it a lot like a Cinco where you just let this bait fall to the bottom very slowly. That's a great way to work this bait during that pre-spawn and during the actual spawn. Or you can just cast it out around cover, around grass and just twitch it along and bass will absolutely come up and smash a fluke style bait during the month of May. Now the next lure is one of the best lures to catch the biggest bass of your life and that is some sort of big swim bait. If you guys have been hanging around the channel you know that I've really been trying to learn a glide bait a lot and this is slowly becoming one of my favorite techniques to go out there and catch some bass. Oh my gosh look at that! Now, whether you're throwing a glide bait like this or maybe a bigger soft swim bait like a Mega Bass Mag Draft swim bait, this is one of the best times of the year to throw these big baits and catch big bass. Now, one thing that you should note is that if bass are really hard on beds and they're actually spawning, a swim bait can actually still be very effective at simply finding those fish. You can throw a swim bait around cover and you will see fish that are on their beds actually kind of come up and swipe at these bigger swim baits. To them, it might look like a bluegill trying to get in their nest to kind of rob them of their eggs. So although they might not always get this bait, they will at least show themselves where then you can go back and throw a wacky rig or that floating worm and catch that fish. Now, one of the biggest things that I'm finding out with a bigger glide bait like this is really that the bass like a certain cadence. Sometimes they like it working a little bit faster, doing shorter little glides, and sometimes they like it worked a little bit slower doing big wide glides and the big thing that you want when you want to fish these baits is some sort of wind you want some sort of chop on the water and you also want some water clarity that is probably at least three foot of visibility if you have three foot four foot five foot ten foot of visibility that is great but no matter what wind is going to be your best friend with these big baits the wind really helps these bass commit to the bait where sometimes if you're throwing it in really slick calm conditions like you see behind me you'll just have a bunch of followers which can be very frustrating now the glide bait of my choice right now is this Storm Marashi run that I'm holding right now. I like it because it's a fairly inexpensive bait when it comes to glide baits. I also like this bait because these treble hooks can continuously turn on this bait. The way that this is rigged, these treble hooks can just keep on spinning and spinning. And that really helps you to keep fish pegged that actually come up and hit this bait. Because with a glide bait, the one big thing that is not fun is you can lose a lot of fish with this bait. Having treble hooks that turn all the way around helps to keep that hook locked in that fish's jaw. Now the fourth lure is probably one of my favorite lures, period. And I know it's probably one of your favorites as well. And that is a frog. Who doesn't love to just see a bass come up there and absolutely throttle a frog? It is, it is so much fun. And the thing about a frog, bass will start hitting a frog a lot earlier than I think a lot of people believe. I have caught fish on frogs pretty heavily when that water temperature kind of hits that mid 50 range. So if you're fishing in the pre-spawn, you can still pick up this frog and catch fish. And like that glide bait, even if the bass are actually spawning in the month of May where you live, you can work this bait over them. And sometimes they will actually come up and eat it and you can catch them or they will leave least show themselves where then you're like oh there's a bass over there on a bed and then during that post spawn this is a bait that I literally have rigged up all the time especially if I'm fishing around vegetation whether that's lily pads or reeds or matted vegetation or if I'm fishing ponds a lot of times you're going to see some scum start to develop on your ponds and those bass will absolutely come through that scum to crush a frog during the month of May. Now one of the biggest tips that I have found when it comes to fishing a frog over the years is that bass sometimes really get keyed up on a certain speed at which you fish the frog. Sometimes fishing this bait really really fast maybe walking it super quick or actually kind of chugging it across the water will get bass to react to it but sometimes and this is one of my favorite ways to fish this bait is to fish it extremely slow if you know bass are in a certain area maybe you have found them a couple of days before one of the best ways to work this thing is very very slow just 
popping it and just walking it extremely slow across the surface, letting it sit there for a couple of seconds in between those twitches. And we all know that it is one of the most fun bites when they come unglued on that thing. Now the fifth lure is a lure that I probably have tied on my front deck of the boat 12 months of the year. Like it is probably one of the most productive lures to go out there and catch bass. And that is a swim jig. Now recently, I actually did a full video all about the swim jig. I'm gonna leave that linked right here. So if you guys actually wanna learn more about a swim jig, how to fish it, it is definitely one of the best lures in May and you can learn about it all right here. So click on that video next. Don't forget to check out Sportsman's, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.